Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Uh, hi, this is uh, Rish Mitra. Really good to be back here. So um, all of us here are uh, consumers you know, of uh, a massive industry which we call consumer packaged goods. So almost uh, $5 trillion of consumption we do uh, annually, uh, which unfortunately 90% uh, plus of that ends up uh, not being recycled uh, and uh, in our oceans or landfill. Not too long ago, like only 60 years ago, uh, we celebrated a make, use, dispose economy, where this was the cover of Life magazine that we've had major disruption, something very cool. We can make stuff, consume it, and throw away. It was considered very cool. Even I grew up with that aspiration. I mean, I grew up in a very rural part of India in a state called Bihar. And uh, we used to have a perfect example of circular economy. Everything we ate was seasonal. Our even tea was served to us in clay pots. It went back in the society. But watching television and massive Hollywood movies, we thought, oh my god, I wish we had this life where you know, milk would come in a bottle instead of the buffalo and the milkman which would come to our door every day. So that was the aspiration, and we, we loved it, but never did, we didn't realize that 60 years later, we create more waste than ever before, and we are running out of places uh, to hide it or put it away. In alone, 2020, EU exported 13 million tons of waste to a country like Turkey. The scale is crazy. It's like 2 billion tons of waste uh, gets disposed uh, every year. So did you know that actually people are not able to connect the waste crisis to the climate crisis? but there's a very, very strong overlap. In fact, a very large portion of plastic is used to create even fossil fuels and petroleum, which actually uh, leads in, indirectly in our society to the fumes and increase of carbon footprint. So do not delineate it. Like, it is very, very interlinked, uh, the cause of the waste uh, and, and overall uh, uh, climate issue. One of the myths about recycling is a lot of us think that when you put your plastics or recyclables in the lovely bag provided to you by your municipality, your job is done. And thankfully, it is done, because as conscientious consumers, uh, that's the right thing to do. But really, um, the point is that there has been very little digital innovation in this space, and it's a massive problem, you know. It's like literally oceans of waste get disposed every day, and there is tremendous inefficiencies in recycling. That is the reason. And a lot of finger pointing happens at governments, at the plants behind it. A lot of people have good intentions, but certain problems can only be solved into using modern technologies. It cannot be, our consumption patterns are so high that it cannot be just solved with uh, manual labor and very mechanical industries uh, behind it. So imagine if we could show the fate of every product in the world where they ended up, you know, Ima on literally on a signature level, uh, where we get to know from post-consumption where did they end in real time. We don't know that. Imagine on the other side, everybody knows where they buy it from. There's so much technology available today. In fact, I feel like the majority of the world's innovation has gone into buy-buy, sell-sell. Everybody forgets about everything post-consumption. Uh, so at Grey Parrot, we are monitoring crazy amount of waste, huge. We are monitoring majority of waste flow that goes to these very large material recovery facilities, and we're analyzing them real time. You would think, why is that needed? You know, you can't, you can't solve a problem 
unless you can measure it. So what has been really missing in this industry is a large-scale digitization of the industry. Basically, no one really knows what waste composition is. You may not realize that something we very easily call as plastic in general, to bring it back in the society, we need incredible amount of separation, like food grade versus non-food grade. So your, the plastic that is used in your sushi tray is a very different plastic used in your detergent powder. You know. And they really needed to be treated separately and processed separately to be brought back in the society. So all these large waste management plants, they, of course, are processing a lot of the waste, but they really don't know on a unique level what each material is. And there is some level of manual labor included in sorting it and some mechanical processes but it is very grossly uh, inefficient. So today, already we've implemented this technology, which is a combination of a box which sits on the waste flow. And what you're seeing in the screen is pretty much a box which is analyzing this river of waste going through these massive plants and classifying them into different categories, like aluminum and PET and HDP and fiber. The list is long. It's like above. 50 plus categories with 100% efficiency. What I want to show you is a live example recorded uh, what these plant managers actually get to see. It's so important that we don't see waste as waste. We actually translate it to the waste ecosystem as unlocking the financial value of waste, because that's the only way you, because if you think of waste as waste, that's a major gap. It is one of the most precious resources available to us. You know, Sometimes do you think that we're digging holes in this planet to extract value from natural resources? While well, look around you. We are surrounded by one of the most precious resources, which is secondary materials. You know, Construction and demolition, electronic waste, clothing. Everything you're consuming, you're throwing away after some period of time. And we really, really need to learn to extract real value and financial value. So this is a good example where it's a, it's a waste plant in Britain. What's going on here, let me tell you. You see there's a category split. This is an example of a residue line. So everything that is moving here has already been disposed. So this will, 100% of this stuff will end up in landfill. Okay, it's not, it's not coming back to the society. But the plant is already learning because of our technology that actually every hour it is losing 2,000 pounds worth of materials, which the plant could have gained. You know? And they could bring the residue line back and process it properly. So there's a major financial education going on, and each material is given, indicated in the graph, and that education is very, very important. We are actually exposing the whole inefficiencies in the flow. This is another example in Austria where the opposite, all these materials have actually gone through the right process. And, and what you'll see in the graph, a transition that a very mixed colored line over a period of time becomes very clean. You see the green and the purples and the light blue? That means it went through the right sortation processes and it is being certified by our system as high quality. So, in the world of waste, the higher the quality, the higher the secondary market value. This is very important from a business point of view. Purity and quality is very important. So this is a bailing process. Once it goes through the whole chain in the plant, our technology is almost acting as a rubber stamp. It's certifying that this is a high quality product. So not only are we analyzing 100% of the waste flow, which accounts for like billions of units of products, but we're also saying and figuring out what is a good quality output so that these plants can export it and be used as secondary materials. So what is indirectly happening is we are an AI platform and we are building a brain and we are actually disrupting the physical ecosystem. The waste infrastructure is big. There's plants, there's optical sorters, there's robotic arms, but they don't have a brain and they don't see. 
but we see. So when we analyze 100% of the waste flow come in, we send signals to the other mechanical parts of the plant, whether the right robotic arm can pick it up, because at any given point, we know exactly what material it is, what brand it is made of, where in the belt it's situated, what its weight, and what's its secondhand market value. All these insights really makes and brings a lot more efficiencies in the waste value chain. So we're already operating out of like 30 major plants uh, in the world. And in this video, you can see on the top, the gray box is the gray parrot box. It literally sits on this oceans of belts, which processes huge amount of plastics and in real time analyzes and identifies what's going on. We are also capturing brand data. We are entering an era of extended producer responsibility where actually when you see a recycled logo on a product which you're using, what that means is the producer is taking the full responsibility of the entire life cycle of the product. It is not just the consumer's responsibility, it's the producer's responsibility to make the product with material sciences that go through these plants in a more effective way. But how are they going to make this decision? You know, There's so much research going on with the leading CPGs or FMCGs in the world of material sciences, right? It's a huge field. Billions of dollars are being spent in R&D, but all this is done in a very random sample of 500 objects they analyze. Today, we can tell them without any digital watermarking, without any signatures, literally like an audit trail of everything that goes through these plants and tell them that whether your product's sort of recyclability score, you know, it ended up in a good place or it ended up in a landfill. So we're trying to educate the market that a lot can be done. Also, design matters. You may not know that the logo you see with that green circle, it's actually not a logo which says it's recyclable. It means that brand is contributing towards sustainability, almost like a plastic tax or a carbon tax. And a lot of people misunderstand that that green logo means I put it in the recyclable bin and it doesn't get. When, when you see that stuff, that means it actually ends up in the landfill. So there's a big consumer education gap and we also communicate, is, communicate to these brands to do a more effective job uh, of communicating uh, to customers. So this is what we're doing. We are closing the loop on the circular economy. There are incredible innovations happening in miniature sort of container-sized material plants which will be placed around the cities which can process waste in real time. The, the image on the left is already happening in places like South Korea. We are sorting and recycling waste at scale, but also giving tremendous insight to the packaging world that, hey, you can improve your products uh, and get data about it and make it more recyclable. So our vision is to create a world where every piece of waste uh, is seen as a resource. Hope you found it useful. Thank you very much. <laughs>